responding to an early morning shooting over here in Dorchester. See if they have. I'm not too sure how many people got struck, but they did say there's multiple shots that were fired. Like I said, they um, had an early morning shooting over here. Not too sure exactly um, what transpired, but. On this side, let's see what we see. You get news media on that side over there. You can see the news cameras on the other side. Um, so like I said, it's kind of hard to say what transpired. We do know that there were multiple shots fired. Not too sure how many people got struck over here. This cruiser looked like it suffered some kind of damage from prior incident. I like this, okay, something happened inside this storefront right here. They're focusing on the, um, that storefront right there. So it's kind of hard to say what happened right there. This is, this intersection will be um, Dorchester Ave and Hancock Street. So I'm on Hancock Street looking at okay. Dorchester Ave. It's Mr. Uh, Kevin Peterson, right? Hey, how you doing, Mr. Peterson? Kevin Peterson. Reverend Pe I remember. I know. Who, I know who you are. Okay. I met I you before. Met before. Yeah. What's you, your name? Nez. You remember Nez? Yes, yes, I do. I do remember you. Yeah. How you doing? I, I remember you. All right. How you been? Ah. Oh, okay. It's my uh, fourth crime scene. Fourth today. crime scene. Now, what, what, have you talked to the mayor about this? If she has any provisions about doing anything about this? No. Not, not in the way that it needs to happen. Oh, okay. We're, we're, in, the, we're in the 
state of emergency, right? Right. And um, the resources that are being uh, uh, the resources that are being held back. Oh. Uh, really can help address the issue. So, the, so the Boston police could use some more resources yeah. that exactly. much needed. So the mayor needs to get on her A game. For sure. Charlie one of my and the police commission. Mm-hmm. Shooting happening inside. Um, I'm not too sure if it's inside or outside, but they focus on the inside. There was must have been an after party there or something. Something like that. Charlie two or two out of one. A police uh uh, I got a radio, I got a text message, and I got an alert. So, mm -hmm. people... Uh, 202, what do you use? Uh, mm, no, I use a radio, radio, a regular radio. You went up to a uh, number of these last night? Did you go uh, I go to quite a few of these. You see my YouTube channel. I put a lot of stuff on there. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen um, it. I gave Harry, it to you before. Four, four, I, I, I'll give it to you. I got your, your number hasn't changed, right? Yeah, uh, 304. I got your number. I got your number. I'll give you a call. Good morning, sir. Uh, can you show me Ocean Road, please? Kindly show me off at Butler Street. So what are you picking up? That's police communication? Uh, this is... um. Oh, we're listening to multiple different things. We're listening to area, um, area C11, which is over here. And also listen to B2 and uh, a few other channels. I know. I, I think it's more than one. I don't know the exact number, cause they got. I think they had a set, a couple of walk-ins too, but I'm not sure. So I don't want to say that if it's true, if it's not true. And this is only on this side of the city. Imagine what's happening on the other side of the city. Yeah, yeah, Charlie 982, Ocean North, good morning. Shots on Harris Street last night. Watch it. Mm-hmm. Draper. It's every night's the same night. Yeah. It's insane. You follow this just about... I listen to it pretty much every night. Yeah. So I hear probably what you hear, maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But you're probably getting the same information I'm getting. Is uh, Verde restaurant probably? Yeah, I believe so. From 274 Hancock Street, star mileage 39114, your time. Yeah, it's in the back on Herald Street, 35 Herald Street in that area. Got it, thank you. Emergency transport to headquarters from um, 274 Hancock Street. Drop it to the Yes, yeah. So this is going to be a hot scene for the for the next couple of hours anyway. Well, because uh, this this scene is gonna have a lot of um, mm, I don't want to say too much, but a lot of focus points on it because mm -hmm. they gotta get a lot of evidence. Mm. Mm. 
I can sit it in the uh, you know six. Guy right, the, guy to, the guy to the right? Yeah, I've seen him on scene. Oh, yeah, he's one of the crime scene detectives. Yeah. But he's, well, yeah, he's a crime scene detective. Some stuff. Uh, yeah, you have. You have. I, I've, um, I remember you. I'm Mr. Where Porter. I'm the YouTube guy. Yeah, where did we meet? We met at Faneuil Hall. We met at a couple okay. of protests. Okay. A couple of marches. We met a few places. Matter of fact, I had called you on some things, too. I, you, you have to know who the face is by now. Yeah. I knew who you was right away. Yeah, I'm kind of bad at faces. That's okay. Uh, I texting me, texting I me text you. Always, yeah, texting me is always best. I get, I get your number because I do have it from a couple of years ago, so I do remember remember exactly who you are. You know, um, I tell you, you know, um, oh wow, the ba the bagel guy. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's always yeah. passing out the bagels. Dan, 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 Dan the bagel man. man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, it, wow. You, you, you hang out with him all the time, or you talk to him all sometimes, the time. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. yeah. Especially when we're downtown. The, right. The Faneuil Hall. And stuff. he knows you and his yeah. his group, his organization knows yeah. you. It's some kind of, uh, I don't know what they got in it, to be honest. I've never been inside there. It has a lot of people Sorry, in there, so sure. Ending mileage, 9, 4, 5, 7, 4, 3. 7.25. And, and was, just so you know, there's a lot of parties like this that go around the city of Boston. Like, Halloween parties? Um, any party, like it don't have to be Halloween. It's just just a party in general, like late night parties, because people are looking for places to have a good time. And they have house parties, and usually end end up in stuff like this. Halloween it happened to be probably a Halloween party because it's close to Halloween, but even though it's not Halloween, they still have parties. Yeah. I've been on here about uh, maybe 20 minutes or so. Alpha Like the focus point is inside the uh, establishment. Mm
Yeah. And which which church are you from? Metropolitan. Metropolitan. Got the church yet? Oh, okay. Norfolk and uh, and Morton. And Norfolk, Norfolk and Morton. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got, I got you. Eight eighteen Ocean North. Morning. Now, are other community leaders trying to help out, or are they even trying to put their hand in the pot or anything? Or? No, they were trying to. Some of the pastors were with the meeting at Greater Love this weekend. In a positive way, though, right? Not trying a, not trying a, to, but nothing really came out of it. And we, want, we were trying to get the mayor to declare a state of emergency, and yeah. they talked her down from that. Really? Which is not helpful. It's not helpful. That's not helping at all, yeah. then, because it is a state of emergency. It is. It is. Oh, we see what's going on in the school department, on the city streets. Yeah, it's kids in guns, with guns yeah, in school. It's, school. it's crazy. Yes. Seven-year-old kid with a gun in his backpack. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess they caught the young man at the Excel school in South Boston. Mm -hmm. You heard about that? I heard about that, yeah. too, yeah. yeah. Going through the walls with a gun, a loaded gun. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's what we have to deal with. And the thing we about gotta, it, we gotta we gotta flip the script on this. We're, we gotta stop. Just, we gotta make a better yeah. image. Yeah. We should have a better image. Yeah, we need. It. Yeah. You see the crisis that they have on Method of Mayo down there. That's serious. That's serious. That's that's out. That's, that's out of control. They got a whole street to themselves. I see sometimes the city just pushes them back in that uh, in the corner. Oh, they right got there. that whole bright at nighttime. You come by, say it like one o'clock in the morning. That whole Bratton Street. Yeah. Cars can't go down there. Yeah. So they got tents on both sides of the street. And anything else is um just all there is. Probably what do they do? Remove them during the day? Or? They push them further down, further down. Hey, how you doing, buddy? That's one of the homicide detectives. You know his name? Don't know his name, but I know the face. Yeah. Look at our cameras. There's plenty of cameras. And they're going to ask, they're gonna ask for that footage. They're going to obtain it. Um, just so you know. They, mm -hmm. they will get it. Three nine one one seven. That's what they do. They scope out stuff and identify it. In seven thirty. We're in the wave of technology, so technology is always in assistance. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're doing what you're doing, man. Yeah. Uh, I try to, you know, make, make people be aware of what's going on in the community. Good, you, good and bad. Do you edit those? And, 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 and well, most of the time, it's or? not edit. It's just put, yeah, just load, them up load up the way it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I may pause every once in a while, but I try to not not to edit because it, it doesn't show the real effect. Yeah. You no, know, if you do too much editing, then how can I believe what it, yeah, what it takes I'm away from the, uh, what you're seeing? Right? Correct. Oh, good. Yes, I said there's quite a few people in here. I think Channel 7 is the only news people over here. Yeah. I got a single yeah, call for a left. fight at Melia Cass and Harrison. Call was driving by and saw a female assaulted a male inside a great Nissan Altima. Marshall to Fox and Charlie on the plate. The stuff you get, man, I, I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> it's coming in all well, the, time. the city wide, if you listen to city wide, there's something happening every five minutes. This is a crime taking place every five minutes in the city of Boston. Not to mention what Boston EMS and Boston Fire have to listen to. I think they're busy than the Boston police, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. 
And, and they haven't even started processing the scene yet, so that's why it says it's gonna take a long time. Because how do you know when they start processing? Well, well, the, you won't see that, but you see that the lead detectives start doing their stuff, and they haven't started doing that yet. They just they're just still, you know, surveying what they have to survey. But this is like this is gonna be. A, uh, it's gonna take a little while. It's not gonna be five minutes or ten minutes. So maybe. Uh, you, you live around here? Not in this area, Roxbury. So you came from Roxbury. Roxbury, yeah. <laughs> and was it as active as it is now? Pretty much. Pretty much the same. Yeah. Because it happened around six thirty. Yeah, it was early. It was. I don't know the exact time, but it might have been 6.30, maybe, maybe, hmm. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. I got a, I got a, I got a tip. Yeah, I'm going to go to the Delta 2 on. You gave me a tip? Hey, everybody gets tips around here. Delta 2 on 1, dead, right? You got, um, live Boston over there. Yes, sir, there's, uh, you listen to, like, like Live Boston is a website where they post a lot of videos and stuff about the city as well. More stuff than the news media posts. How do you know where where are they? I know. I happen to know the people. <laughs> you got if you're out there long enough, you know who they are. And they don't. They don't. They don't have like me. I don't have nothing that identifies who I am, but. Like me, me and you, you and me and me. Now you know who External Affairs Porter is. So you say, oh, that's External Affairs Porter. Exactly. Right, me knowing who Live Boston is, let us see, okay, that's Live Boston. All right, me know who Channel 7 is. Yeah. Well, that's that's yeah, how we usually. The meeting point's going to be Dorchester Rabbit and Hancock Street. So what they're doing, they're calling City Warrior Resources over here to deal with this issue right here. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Because so um, they need help with calls, they need help with gathering evidence, okay. taking witnesses to the um, headquarters. Okay. So they need a lot of resources to do that. For some of the detectives are arriving now. And those are probably the victor units. I'm not sure if those are victor units or not, but it might be. Okay, you know all this. This yeah. is cold for me. What is that? What's a victim? The, the, those victim? would be the... Those, those would be the homicide detectives okay. if they are. Uh, you call them victim units? Vic, victor units. Victor. Yeah. Okay. Named after the, uh, the car? Victoria? No, no. Nope. It's just vice victim. units. Vice. How long have you been doing this, Matt? How long have we been doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mean videoing or following yeah, what they do? Following and video. Oh, I've been following them for years. I've been videoing for like four or five, but. Why do you do it? I do it for just. Keep Knowledge, people. activity, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's one of the detectives right there as well. Where, in the, in the puffy coat? No, the one to the left. Uh, the yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven thirty-six. Yeah, they must have had some after after our party or something going on there. They're still getting people out of there. Not too sure if it goes up several floors or just one floor. It sounds like that. That it looked like that building is attached to a, a apartment complex. But not too sure if it's inside or outside. But. They're still getting more people out of there, so they still they can't even start processing the scene until they get these people out of there.
It is cold. That's the Victor unit. I'm on. I'm on. I'm at a robber on Hancock. Can we update that address to 299 uh, Hancock Street, please? 299. If, if, you're going, if you want to talk to people, you, you get it. Well, don't talk to him now. We always talk to him. Mm. That's the guy that you know. If you had to talk to somebody, he gives information. Yeah, no, he know he knows enough. He doesn't know who I am, but just, just have a chat with him, see what he says. He's going to be the guy that's probably taking the lead from that point. He's going to be the one of the supervisors of, of that area. Just got out the house. Clip, That's... tip on his tie. <laughs> Stylishly uh, attired. Uh, is that a Yankees hat? Uh, <laughs> I think it may be. It's possible. <laughs> you don't know his name. Mm, I I should know his name. I had a couple of encounters with him, so I, sh I should know his name. I, think I just forgot it. It wasn't that important to me. Mm -hmm. I think he works out of B3, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong on that. Which is uh, Dudley? No, that's that's uh, Mad Mad uh, Morton Street, yeah. Five, five, 
So they wait around until they, until he shows up and then start, they start Charlie processing something. Mm -hmm. Well, it's more to it than that, but you know, he's, he's going to probably take lead of this because of the severity of it. What they're doing now, they're just debriefing him what they have, what they found, and what took what they believe took place. Yeah, what do you have? Yeah. 15 minutes old now. Matt, Melanie and Cass and Harrison for a couple fight inside a great Nissan. First partial of two Fox Charlie. Call is no longer on scene. Yeah, any Spanish-speaking officer down here, it's a 99 handcuff. Any Spanish-speaking officer is on scene. Hey, are we supposed to be fine? Hey, that's another good morning. I got a guy riding a bike there. How's that happening? 35 days is responding to the scene. Oh, who's he? 12. Who's part of it? I'm not too sure. Harry Bates? Mm -hmm. No, go. We have a service cargo to uh, BMC to relieve the uh, officer the down there. And also, we need one to uh, the Brigham's to release that officer as well. Not too sure what happened over there. All right, I need a, a service car to relieve the officer at Brigham's. Brigham Women Hospital is also need a service car. Fox base. Go ahead. Fox base, the um, ETs from the day 12, the 101 and the uh, 411 will be logging on and heading over to relieve our uh, last half ETs. Okay, sure. I may walk around too. Huh? We'll okay. see. Okay. All right. We'll see. All right. Fox face. Fox face. Do you want the four? So, Boston Police is dealing with a intense crime scene here. I'm gonna walk around with Mr. Peterson on the other side, so we can kind of see both what each other to see at the same time. It's gonna be a while from the process of the scene, so just kind of hang in there. What's up, Matt? Harry Charlie 1, I'll check on Kilo. I would appreciate that. Time seven fifty four.
on the 101. Uh, when you clear that call, they're going to need you as an EDT over to 299 Hancock Street on the 11th side. So all the news media is coming out today. How you doing? Hey, what happened here, man? All right, um, trying to figure it all out. All the local media is just waking up, coming out. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? This is going to be a pretty active scene. Probably for the rest of the day. Radio 9126, Officer Cox. Right. Operations, Harry Charlie 1. Go ahead, ma'am. Kilo units should be en route momentarily. The Kilo EDTs, as soon as they clear their calls, we have the uh, Gold EDTs should be en route uh, per the uh, Gold Charlie 1. They're pulling all the EDTs citywide. Yeah. Assist all the time what they need. Copy that. They're pulling on because they're changing shift though too. That's that's the mess up. You guys know what happened though? All I know there was a shooting. I couldn't tell you what happened. Oh, yeah. uh, you better talk to one of the head detectives. Oh, uh, you better talk to one of the um. Oh, block. Block the yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. Right. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Right. Nice um, yep, yeah. Um, so, Reverend, so that uh, everybody has it back at the station, please explain it for us. Uh, Reverend Kevin Peterson, K E V I N P E T E R S O N, founder of the New Democracy Coalition. Uh, tell me uh, what you've been dealing with this evening. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've been out uh, overnight, uh, just um, as a private citizen, as a reverend, sort of following uh, some of the violence that's been happening across the, the uh, black community. And uh, I've just been absolutely uh, shocked and appalled about the, the, the numbers of shootings uh, throughout Dorchester uh, overnight. Uh, and here, as the uh, sun is rising, uh, in one of the most uh, violent communities in the city, we, we come across another crime scene. We pray and hope that uh, there are no fatalities, uh, but we uh, are mostly concerned that, uh, that the violence persists, and, and we're convinced that we live in a state of emergency within these, uh, these neighborhoods of Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan. And we call on the, the, the neighbors who are in these communities to be vigilant, report crimes, but also join us in, uh, in addressing the issues ourselves. We, we know that the uh, police department has a job, the mayor has a job in terms of providing a public safety plan, uh, but uh, that is not evident at this point. And uh, we continue to press the city to do its job. At the same time, we, uh, we're calling on members throughout the black community, throughout communities of color to, um, to join us as we begin to organize uh, on behalf of ourselves uh, to protect ourselves. 
in your community meetings uh, will begin this week, next week? I mean, what's the hope there, especially we, after some we, we, we are planning uh, our first community meeting uh, this coming Wednesday, November 2nd, 6 p.m. at the Gilbert Community Center, uh, just uh, feet away from where uh, the, barber, the barber was uh, murdered uh, on Washington Street. Uh, we, we're uh, having that meeting in, the, in that place uh, because uh, it is a, a focal point for the black community uh, at this point with regard to the violence. Uh, so many people knew uh, that man, knew about his kindness and knew about uh, how he had given so much of what he had in terms of talent to the community. And so we, we want to convene in, in that space and um, a little later uh, this morning we'll be knocking on the doors and posting flyers in that community to, to uh, ask the community to come out uh, in this very private uh, meeting on Wednesday. Uh, we're not asking elected officials to, to join us, neither are we asking uh, the, 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 the mayor or, um, or the police commissioner. We, we, uh, we want a private meeting among uh, citizens uh, in those neighborhoods uh, across the, uh, the black neighborhoods in the city to, uh, to come out and uh, engage in some community planning. Is the plan then to kind of take those conversations to the city and engage further? Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. have a series of meetings. Uh, the first will be in Dorchester, then we'll have another in it's Roxbury, another and a third in Mattapan. No. The goal is to, uh, to compile all of the thinking, all the suggestions into a comprehensive community policing plan uh, that emanates from the black community. Uh, we will then uh, announce that plan to the community, whatever results there are in terms of uh, ideas and suggestions and strategies. Uh, and we will offer this plan to uh, the police commissioner in particular uh, to get feedback uh, and to uh, argue once again for a state of emergency and to argue for resources that uh, we believe the residents in these uh, communities deserve given the disproportionate amount of violence and, and crime, there should be a disproportionate amount of resources coming into, into the community. Uh, we wish that the police commission would simply begin uh, community policing in these high crime areas where police are walking the beat in, uh, in business districts uh, and on, uh, in the neighborhoods where, uh, where the crime is high. That's something that the police commissioner can do today, reassign uh, police officers who are in so-called special units, the bike units, the, uh, the gang units, put them back on the streets, uh, put them in, on, in walking beats so that the community can see uh, that something's happening and feel just a little more confident uh, that, um, that, the, that the police are uh, attuned to the, um, the fears and anxieties of those who are in this community. You guys held a news conference Friday leading into the weekend yeah. about this very matter. How dismayed are you that we are in this situation once again? I'm dip deeply dismayed that um, just um, less than 24 hours after we uh, called a state of emergency, urging the city again to to uh, to engage in uh, a state of emergency plan, that um, we have an eruption of uh, shootings across the black community. It is a um, deeply disconcerting, uh, painful for me as a minister in the community to see this violence over and over and over again. And we know that 99.9% .9 of the people who live in these communities are law-abiding law and they're victims of, uh, of, this, of these types of crime. Uh, so for the, um, the uh, police commissioner to turn the deaf ear to citizens or residents who are trying to appeal to uh, uh, his authority uh, is deeply, deeply disconcerting. Uh, I'm not happy and a lot of people throughout the community are not happy. I've, uh, since Friday, I've fielded uh, close to 50 calls from, from uh, citizens who say, uh, from citizens who live in this uh, community who say that uh, uh, what we're doing is right, that they're going to join us uh, at these uh, community meetings uh, because they feel like uh, they are not uh, being accorded the attention that they, they should be given the, uh, the crisis that we're experiencing. So I, um, again, appeal to uh, 
uh, residents across the impacted neighborhoods of Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan to join us at these uh, community meetings uh, with the emphasis that if uh, the police commissioner will not uh, provide a clear and transparent uh, public safety plan uh, about which the community can evaluate, uh, we're going to construct our own plan and, and enact our own plans uh, one way or another. We're not sure how we're going to finance it or resource it. That, that really shouldn't be a burden on us, but we're going to find a way to, to begin policing ourselves. So Wednesday evening at Gilbert Community Center? Yes, Wednesday evening, Gilbert Community Center, 6 p.m. We're expecting uh, a residents in that particular na neighborhood to, uh, to come out and uh, uh, there's going to be a great deal of um, expressed frustration and anger, so we anticipate that. Uh, but we hope that we can settle uh, things down at that meeting uh, where we begin to uh, break out in sessions and figure out uh, uh, how to address this very, very complex issue uh, from different angles. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Robert. I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you for covering it. If, oh. you, if you can hype up this community meeting as much as you can, I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. It. Sure, we really want, uh, yeah. want the community to know that this absolutely. is happening. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's okay. No, he basically summed it up again. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Just, so you're talking yeah. about this latest. Yeah. No, uh, we just Sorry, talked mm -hmm. no problem. a little bit about that. Uh, so. Get out of your way. Hi, right. Channel 5 reporter right here at, at her best. All right. <laughs> you got Kim Lucy to my right. There she goes. All right, sir. Um, you got Matt the cameraman. You got to get a picture of Matt. Give, give yourself a plug, Matt. <laughs> Matt the cameraman. You got Reverend Peterson over there. And it's going to be at the Gilbert Community Center? Gil the Gilbert Community Center, 155. Washington Street, near uh, Columbia Road, near the Burger King over there. Okay, uh, gotcha. Yeah, it's at, at, it's at um, not too far from Celebrity Cuts, Celebrity. Where, where the young barber was murdered. Uh, okay, last week. I might try to make it over if I can. Yeah. Oh no, I need you to come in. <laughs> All right, I'm, yeah. I try to make it over there. Yeah. What, this Wednesday coming up? This, this Wednesday, the second. November Wednesday the second. Okay, I try to clear my schedule if I can make it over there. At 6 p.m. You said? 6 p.m. Yeah. All right, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. You're hanging around, right? I'll be around. So now the crime scene detectives have started processing the scene and they do have some evidence markers up there. Like I said, a lot of evidence is inside. Now, <clears throat> give you guys a little backstory of what I just learned. I'm not gonna say who told me this, but somebody had told me something. I'll tell you guys in a few. I 
this shoot. So, you know, I'm not like a typical guy to be carrying equipment um, besides my, my own weapons. But I, I just, I, I can't, I personally can't walk down the street anymore uh, around here, not just because of uh, word of mouth from other people that live in the neighborhood, but my own uh, experiences um, walking to and from. Uh, you know, you see guys selling drugs, and you see people uh, getting into fights, and, and there's very little or little to none in terms of response by the police. Um, Are you supportive of uh, Reverend Peterson's plan to get the community involved in this? Uh, you know what? I am. I actually, uh, I'm a member of the Phoenix Gym over in um, Newmarket, and they're very support, uh, supportive uh, function going on over there. Uh, I think it would be a good idea that people uh, maybe even check it out. I, I could, uh, you know, maybe give you a or something like that. But no, it's a, it's a very, uh, very positive environment. Uh, all are welcome. Uh, it's all inclusive. They make they make you feel welcome, and uh, their their one and only goal uh, is to see the best in every individual that comes around. Uh, no matter what their uh, struggles are, whether it be drugs, uh, uh, drinking. Thank you. Appreciate Thank your time. Thank, Thank you for talking to us this morning. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Is there anything else I could do? Okay. No. We're gonna go ahead. We gotta get yeah, back. Yeah, we gotta get back. back. Okay. Can you guys please put that on? Please. You do the best. You can. Um, Tonight, this is the. Processing of the scene right here. Okay. So these are all the crime scene detectives, and they're doing their. They're gonna do their processing of the scene. What is, what does that mean in your, in your mind? Well, they're gathering okay. all the information. All they, they're gonna document, photograph, okay. gather all the information they can possibly gather, and put it. That, that, that green cone is that that's, maybe that's the, the evidence? Yeah, like oh, that. that's part of it. There's more on the other side. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, is that if you right? step to your right and a few, when you take a look at the building, there's more ev evidence markers. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Probably gun, gunshot. Uh, could be could be casings, could be droplets of blood. Who knows what it is? But it's it's key in the evidence. I don't know if you can see it, but if you kind of, I, I move over there so you can see it in the future. Like it's on, it's like between that car and, and the building itself. They're going to be processed. It's going. To... Sorry, sorry. Oh. You, you got... What's, what's up, man? How you doing? You gotta move, please. I don't want to hit you with my car. Oh, you won't hit me, <laughs> unless you can't drive. If cars, cars don't go sideways. Last I seen it, I never seen a wheel go sideways before in my life. He said, he said, I gotta move because he's gonna hit me. I'm like, unless that car got sideways wheels, it's almost impossible for him to hit me. Maybe he can't drive, you know. I don't know. I don't know how would that car hit me from on the side of him. It's almost impossible. Why? I have no Because. The same thing happened. Three steps after I turn around. Could you see the side of the building from that side? Can you see what? The side of the building from that side. Yeah, you could, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't see any evidence on it. I, I don't, my zoom is not the greatest, but I can't tell exactly what's on it. I had to walk around to get to it. You can always walk around and, yeah. and get it on the other side. But I couldn't see nothing physically on the ground over there. Let's see if I can uh, spin over on this side real quick. Uh, and this is going to be a pretty active scene for the next several hours. I, like I can't, I can't see over there, but I can try to get a, a peek of what's going on over there.
the incident in 11, maybe we can just hold off on some of the motor vehicle issues or um, ask B BTV for some assistance with that. Okay, I have to. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Um, this is going to be a pretty intense scene, so I'm just going to just give you guys an overall view of what's going on. And Now, from what I understand, the, uh, I could be wrong on this, but allegedly, I will say allegedly because I'm not too sure of all the details. Allegedly, the owner of this establishment, he rents it out to a second party. And the second party has been known to have parties in the basement. And he's been trying to get him out of this building because of that reason. And he refused to not have these parties in the basement. So this could be a direct result of that. So like I said, it's alleged that the owner was renting this out to a second party. We have a homicide detective go up. Can a homicide detective go up to seven? Give one of the homicide detectives to go up to seven. Nine twelve going up. Facing. At the same time, we are uh, calling on community members throughout Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan, those who are impacted by this violence, to join us at uh, our community meeting on Wednesday, November 2nd, uh, at the Gilbert Community Center, where we will begin to plan uh, our public safety strategy ourselves. We feel that uh, the city is not going to be responsive than uh, black people uh, within uh, the impacted communities, 99.9% .9 of whom are law-abiding citizens. We can come together and begin to address the issue of violence uh, ourselves. Uh, we can talk about the importance of nonviolence in our homes and in our streets. We can talk about being more vigilant in terms of providing surveillance our, ourselves in terms of uh, uh, identifying those people who commit uh, crimes of any sort. Uh, so we can begin uh, within the community to start uh, a process of, uh, of healing by way of planning and implementing a, a violence reduction strategy. Uh, uh, black people are extremely uh, uh, creative and capable and uh, we possess the, um, the, the resources in our community to address this problem if city government is not responsive in the way it should be. So what was going through your mind when you discovered that this will happen? Well, I've, I've, I've been out all night. Uh, I've been at four different um, uh, scenes where there have been multiple shots. And um, 
I, I, I went home at, uh, at about four in the morning and, uh, to be uh, aroused by the, uh, the knowledge that there's another shooting uh, here in uh, Dorchester. Uh, it's deeply disappointing. Um, but uh, there are some of us in the community who are committed to doing all that they can to address uh, this problem of violence, even if it means that we have to call out our elected officials, uh, and even if it means that we have to call upon the private resources within our community uh, to help stem the violence, then we, we're going to be committed to doing it. Uh, so I'm, I'm deeply uh, troubled uh, just to be at another crime scene on a Sunday morning. Where most of us should be resting or getting ready for work uh, the next day, uh, this community is, uh, is um, I'm sure, feeling uh, confused and dazed, and, uh, and folks are walking by, wondering what's happening in their community, and they're shaking their heads in deep consternation as to um, another uh, incident of violence flaring up in, in places where they live, where they walk their dogs, where they, they, they transport their children to different places. It's, um, uh, it, we, we, we are living in a state of emergency. That, that needs to be stressed um, more than ever. We're living in a, a state of emergency uh, about which we must be responsive. So I, I'm just deeply troubled and saddened and uh, frustrated that um, law-abiding citizens and, and uh, and these communities are being impacted in, in this way. It has nothing uh, to do with uh, most of the people who live in these uh, neighborhoods. They're law-abiding. Uh, they do the right thing. They, they go to work and they care for their families. And for them to be uh, troubled by gunshots in the middle of the night is um, it's just unacceptable. Uh, so again, we, we, we uh, privately uh, express that um, important that we consider ourselves as living in a state of emergency and that we address these issues uh, and forthwith and, uh, with all the sincerity and with all the resources that we can bring to bear. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, uh, Reverend Kevin Peterson, K-E-V-I-N-P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N, K-E-V-I-N-P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N, um, the New Democracy Coalition. 617 304 5068. Thank you, Reverend. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. At the intersection of Hancock and Dorchester Ave. Hello here in Dorchester. I understand there was a um, after hour party in the basement of this uh, restaurant that is being rented out by an individual.
he's going out there. If they have any players at all. Uh, what, the, uh, the city? The city. Because what this is brought to your attention, you got to like it, it, it falls on the police commission and the mayor. Yeah. Now, if if they don't have the resources, they got to go to the state house and say, hey, right. this is what we need. What if that's right? And, yeah. then, and the people, you know, I, I work with some, I can't stump you, I said, I work with one guy that's an idiot. He said he, the mayor has no authority on going to the governor, but she has every authority to go to the governor because this is her city. She's, she's the full person responsible for the city. And if she can't handle it, she got to outsource it to hire people. She just asked for a whole bunch of you can ask about emergency for, funding for, uh, for uh, mass and cats. Oh, she just, she see, just, I got she a, just, hundred, a thousand beds. Right. So if you can do to that. The, to the, to the state government. Right. So, so, yeah. so if you so can you do that, that then yeah. clearly you can ask the house. We live in a, a state of emergency. I need the government to call this a state of emergency. And once you does that, you can bring in the national government. And you can bring in resources. It doesn't mean they have to be off their arm, but they can be bringing in equipment to help people, resources to help people, mm -hmm. control crime freaking areas. You know, there's a lot of things that could be done. Mm -hmm. People say there's nothing to be done, it's because they don't want to do they it. Don't want to do it. And they don't want to take responsibility. Right. See, uh, what I heard is that if uh, if she declares a state of emergency, then yeah. she looks bad. Or does she look like she's bad in either control? Way. Either way. She looks bad either way. If she got people out here, you know, private citizens saying they're calling to say that, they look bad. It it's it already bad. on CNN. It's yeah. on CNN. Well, no, they got to they make it bigger. They got to make it nationwide. This, yeah. this is a point on every crime that's taking place since she's been in office. And, and, and what she planning on doing about it? Anytime she goes to her her photo app, go, if somebody needs to talk to her, say, hey, what are you planning on doing about these, these high crimes in these Asian neighborhoods? Guns in the schools, violence in the schools. Yeah. That's a good point. Anytime she goes to one of these, these photo ops, go down there and challenge her and say, hey, what are you planning on doing? Because you, you're going to these photo ops, but you're not going to come down here. She has no problem going to a photo op. Better candidate, do you show me how you're the yeah. better candidate? People always say, Give her time, she's been here long enough. You know, we can't years. wait. How long are we supposed to wait? Five years when she's out, then come on, you can be here long enough, do your job. Like, that's any other job. You don't say, Give her time. You say, you say you're gonna do the job, you be voted you in, do the job. Why should we give you time? Time to do what? You must make it worse. I mean, we, we listen to these politicians over and over say the same thing, but you don't give them time because if, you, if you're advocating you're a better candidate now, yeah. like, like Maura Haley, she had a rally down in Dudley, right? Well, oh, I'm the best candidate for governor. But what was your track record as attorney general? Sure, sure. I mean, if you win a good attorney general, then how are you going to be a good governor? I mean, you, you can't take one problem, you can't solve another. I mean, I'm not a politician. I'm not a guy. No, 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 he's not. He's a kid. Oh, maybe that other guy said that. Guy on the bike. He's not a kid. He's 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 a kid. People say stuff without the facts. Like, don't. Like, if I don't know, I say I don't know. Put a sound ordinance on people protesting in front of her yeah. apartment or her house, but she can't put a an ordinance on crime and you know, you can set curfews, you can set, you yeah. know, these things to be done. Yeah. If, 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 if crime was happening at a certain time, we hate to use this term martial law, 
But sometimes that, that's, that's sometimes you have to do that to prevent violence. Shut it down. If, if somebody's just walking down the street, just doing what somebody should be doing, of course you can really do that. It's a free country, basically. If these are known people that are causing crime, and they have they have they have the people who they know who the people are. But the police can only do those resources if they allow to utilize those resources. You can't tell them to go ahead and, uh, hey Matt, you just got somebody label you as a police officer. Say what? Somebody so, label you as a, no, it's not him. There's another guy here that was like, he's a police officer. Someone said that about me? Yeah. Really? Who said that? The guy, the, guy the, the, guy the, the, the guy that's on the bike. The guy that's on the bike. Oh, yeah, I'm deep on I don't even know I'm on the other camera. What's the funny thing about it? They think I'm a police officer, too. I come up with the radio and stuff, right? Yeah. They just assume everything. They don't know. They just start assuming stuff without even knowing. It's different when you know the different things that make stuff up as you go along. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been mistaken. Sometimes in the cars. Oh, maybe in the like cars. Like the unmarked cars. Yeah. Maybe, maybe so you came out the car and you probably got that. Yeah. I don't know. But, why did I know? It's crazy. Pretty much got most of the footage I need because you know I'm gonna post this later on. It'll probably go up in the next hour or so. And I, 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 I pause. I don't really edit, so it, it is what it is. But it gets the message out there that what's going on in the community. And the thing about it, like you said, if the mayor and the police commission don't care, then what else is going on underneath? You know? Maybe you need a protest in front of your house. You know what I mean? More resources, more, or, or not even so much more resources. Tearing the resources in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the resources is, is there. And, the, and she, keep in mind, she's the maid that wanted to defund the police. So, in saying that, I would like to ask her a question. Mayor, if you wanted to defund the police, what areas were you going to defund the police on? Because it, it shouldn't be manpower, and it shouldn't be um, equipment. And so, what, where would you, where would you, uh, who, and who obviously who will make this decision? Because if you're saying it, then somebody's going to be in charge of doing it. Mm -hmm. But in the same token, you have a mayor who wanted to defund the police, but look who she hires. A police commission that's not active. You know somebody who has knowledge in curving violence. Someone who has the ability in the street smarts to do something. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't seem to... He has been active. Right now, he should be here. The mayor should be here. Where's the DA? Those people should be here. Um, it's early enough. If you got out the bed and I got out the bed, why can't they get out the bed? Yeah. yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're the peanut. Now, that's the guy to talk to, too. He, he's active in the community. Let's see, uh, I'm going to get a couple of videos of Zizi to the. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, look, we gotta talk because somebody asked me a question about that because they kept they kept seeing him on a couple of news. Mm -hmm. Every day, and everyone. They asked me, they, cause they knew who he was. I knew who he was because I met him years ago. Yeah. I said, I said, I, I know who he is, but they asked me, well, who made him the spokesperson? I said, well, yeah. okay. they all made them. Yeah. Yeah. Early in the morning. Early in the morning. Six o'clock. Um, I guess if we don't have any leaders, I guess people got stuff to put this up as we That's but that's the problem. We don't have all of them. You said that. We don't have any. We don't have we don't have no leaders, I know. We don't have no real outspoken leaders in the black community. We don't even have people you know, we used to have people that would show up when it went down and then they disappear. We don't even have them anymore. No, they're around. They're around? The the trauma team. I mean, oh, them guys, the trauma team? The trauma team and the... They show up for a minute. Oh, uh, yeah, they're the ones that come and give you a fly and tell you... Yeah, that. yeah. But well, my son and my nephew got a uh, shot. Uh, we saw them one time, like, they got killed. We saw them one time. They never called us after this. Not one time. So they didn't follow up nothing? They didn't follow up on the love of anybody else.
let's get my, this platform. I, I normally am on the brush, and I switched over from Facebook to over here in this And I, I love the love that you got to show me. It's an early morning shooting. There was an after party that was going on until six in the morning when um when it was What's going on there. Lit by you you gonna get the mayor to help you guys out or what? Uh, they said a light skin dude walked in. You see that he's actually the kids at this point. Um, last night there was a person that was shot in some critical condition. Oh, they even got the red cup called evidence marker, bro. Yeah. The red cup is going to go for the event. It's like the norm, you know what I mean? It's the norm, it's the new norm. It's like, but this is like, I feel the summer was pretty cool. And October was just heating up. It's like, mm -hmm. Don't forget to follow, don't forget to share, don't forget to hit the double tap the screen. Thanks for all the likes and all the follows and all the gifts. Hello, we are here at La Puerta restaurant where there was a shooting last night. I mean, sorry, at uh, 6 this morning. Uh, we know that two people have been shot. Uh, I don't know the conditions of them at this moment, um, but, you know, this is what's going on. Actually, Kev, do you want to tell people on my platform that, that are on now about Wednesday? This is Kevin Peterson, one of our... Uh, one of our leaders here, our, our activists, uh, and who's been uh, actively, uh, uh, basically fighting. We we have to fight because it's not really we we, we can't we, we've been asking for a long time, but now we have to literally fight yeah, for what we need. Now we but, feel ourselves um, in a fight um, with those people who uh, are supposed to be in authority around just getting resources in our community to respond to all this violence. So I want to invite everyone who's who's watching this to join us on Wednesday, uh, November 2nd, uh, at the Gilbert Community Center, 155 Washington Street, near uh, Columbia Road at Washington Street. Uh, join us as we um, have a private closed door community meeting, no elected officials, no police, mayor is not invited. Uh, we need to come together as a community to figure out how we in the community can begin to respond to uh, all this violence. Uh, we need what to talk. We're doing, this? we're doing it at 6 p.m. 6, 6 p.m. in the evening. It's, it, the Gilbert, and that is the guilt. The Gilbert. Yeah, that's the guilt. The guilt, the guilt on Washington <laughs> Street, right across from the from from the auto body centers and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And down, the, you know, a couple it, couple it's feet a big away open from space. Yeah, it's, it's, we're going to uh, use that open space outside, and we're going to go in because we want a private conversation. We don't want um, uh, politicians picking up on what what we're saying, so they go back and, and try to distort or water down some kind of strategy. We need to um, develop something that really comes out from the heart of the community, uh, so that we can respond ourselves. And that's what we got to do. Appreciate that. All right. So you heard it. Uh, there's a meeting at 6 p.m. on the November 2nd at the Guild uh, Community Center on Washington Street. It's between North Fork and right, it's like right before North Fork Street on Washington Street. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing is, like, I, I look, I've been doing this for many years, um, uh, trying to stop the violence in our community. Uh, and. Yes, yeah. It doesn't really work. It doesn't really work to march, to, to stomp. Um, for us to come together and go to the city hall all as one and let them know, like, we won't tolerate no more of this ish. Dumbass. That's right. That's right. You know? Especially when we have dumbass um, leaders uh, that are getting paid with our tax dollars, you know? 
um, and, and, and not doing their job. Now, let me tell you about this department. Some of them, uh, we ha I have a love-hate relationship with the Boston police. I'm suing them, but at the same time, there's a lot of them that I really like. A lot of these young rookies, they have no idea what's going on. They don't even come from our neighborhood. No, they come from like far up. They move in. They, you know, it's, it's usually, you know, the grandpappy, the uncle, the aunt, the grand, the green, and all of them are in, and then they get in, you know. And it's harder for black and brown people to get on the force. Um, and it, they made it so hard that now, like, now nobody really cares to join the force. Um, and I mean, personally, me, uh, I wouldn't want to be on this force. It's too shitty. Oh, can I say that word on TikTok? But um, exactly. Like I said, it's too shitty, and and, and it's really messed up. And the problem is, we have uh, all these shootings, and um, you know what happens to stop crime and to stop shooting and retaliation shootings? You got to catch the shooter. <laughs> When you don't catch the shooter, the shooter gets caught up by the other shooter. And then the other shooter doesn't get caught and somebody else comes and catches that shooter. And then they finally catch the shooter that was just the, the brother or the cousin that just was young and, and just really overwhelmed with all the violence and overwhelmed with the trauma and can't stand the fact that they've lost two or three family members and then they pick up the gun and then they go do a senseless shooting but they don't know how to do the shooting like the rest of them and then they get they're the ones that get caught you know but it's like it's crazy it, it's crazy. literally crazy. crazy at six in the morning you you you're that fucking drunk oh can i say that word <laughs> I don't know. I have to watch my words on TikTok because oh, wow. I'm used to I'm used to Facebook where I use like. <laughs> well, yeah, some. You know, I use words. You know. So I have to be like. Really just want to give you guys a general idea of what took place over here. Um, the captain has arrived. Um, homicide detectives have arrived. We're not too sure of the condition of the individual. Allegedly, one person was shot in the chest twice. And another person, um, non like threat injuries. So, um, Boston police will be conducting a thorough investigation. Once again, another shooting in, a, in an urban community. Um, another senseless shooting. Um, every night there's at least one or two shootings a night. It, it's, it's getting to be, like Kevin Peterson said, it is a state of emergency. We don't see Kevin Hayden out here. We don't see Mayor Wu out here. Um, matter of fact, we don't see any people from the community out here other than Zito Dapina, myself, and uh, Kevin Peterson. Uh, so that, that, that goes a representation for the uh, people right there. And they got bags and bags of evidence over there. So you can see all the evidence they have. They got several bags of multiple, they got red cups, they got hats, they got gloves, they got um, bottles, all kinds of stuff in those bags. Um, this is the ending of the wrapping up of the crime scene. One evidence marker is a pair of glasses, um, and they've been a swab that for DNA and, and fingerprints and and tie whoever to the scene. Um, so if you say you weren't there, well, um, these are your glasses, aren't they, honey? Um, or, or bro? Um, yeah, you was on the scene. So tell us what the fuck you know. Tell us now, or um, we're gonna hold you until we feel like we're in your job. We may harass you. All right, guys, that, that's, that's what we have. Uh, I'm gonna head up out of here. Um, hopefully there's no more incidents that take place in the community, but, you know, this is one of many. Alright guys, I'll catch you guys on the next one.